Hey everyone, it's Tracy. <laughs> What's so funny is I know I start that like that all the time, and I know you know it's me, but I don't know, I feel like I just have to start it like that every time. Um, so the only time that I do these is when I feel like I have something to share, and um, yeah. So today I uploaded a video, and it was the Haunted Museum one. And in the beginning, I talked about how I felt sad. And, you know, there were people that commented, you know, about me being sad and stuff. And then Joy called me, and she's like, you look so sad in that video. And Joy's my mom. You know, and I only call her Joy when I talk to you guys because you guys know her as Joy. No disrespect. I know people comment on that all the time. And uh, my mom and I are very cool with that. She doesn't take that as any disrespect to her. But I just know you know her as Joy. So that's why I say her name. Anyway. And so she called me and she's like... Are you doing okay? You look so sad in that video. And I want to talk about emotions. Um, because sadness is just an emotion. And we all feel sad. There's no... There's nothing wrong with feeling sad. And it's been raining here. It's rained here all week. It's going to rain for the next couple of days. And you know how like when you're just kind of, not like I was stuck in the van, but you know, you can't really, I mean, we went to the pool. I've been to the hot tub and stuff. But, um, you know, I think rain just makes you ponder about things and listen I've had enough trauma in my life that there's a lot of things to ponder about and I just want you to know it's okay to feel sad and I know that people like my mom and I would do that for my daughter too want to make you feel better you know, it's just a natural reaction, I think, for people to make you not want to feel sad. But, again, it's just an emotion. There's so many. There's a plethora of emotions. And what's funny, I was telling, and I showed you guys that I have that book I wrote. And it's all about emotions. And so I actually started looking into how I can get that published. But I want you to know that it's not bad to feel any emotion. Um, yeah, I just, um, I, I'm not the only one who's been through trauma. And... Sometimes, you know when it's nice out, like you're just like skipping along, like, oh, it's a beautiful day, and, you know, you just, everything's sunny and bright. Kind of like we think van life is sometimes when we watch, you know, certain channels, and that's totally not what it is. Uh, but that, it, we're entitled to feel, we can feel emotions, we could feel like a, a hundred emotions in a minute. And I want to tell you that, so I started out like that, and then, you know, I took a drive, and then driving makes me feel, like, happy. And then, like I said, I was going to a coffee shop, and then I found, like, the haunted place, and so I'm like, oh, yeah, that's where I'm going to go. And I diverted, and I went there. And then my whole, like, attitude changed. You know what I mean? Now I'm going. I have a goal. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to check that out, and that's going to be fun. And 
it's like I was telling my daughter, um, she's going through a lot at her school. And I said, you're in charge of your joy, you know? Um, so, and then I met those people when I was there and I went through the museum and some people, I know maybe it didn't seem scary, but when you're in there by yourself and it's dark, you're running into things that are like talking to you and stuff. That was like scary. I didn't even want to go to the end, but I tell you what, what's weird is when I have like my phone out or my camera, you know, and I feel like all you guys are with me, even though I know you aren't going to see it until after I post it. I'm like, okay, I got to keep going because I literally wanted to turn around because it was scary in there. I was all by myself. <laughs> but again, that like kind of like it's the fear and facing your fear. And then you saw when I came back, I'm like, yeah, well, there's no fear because I know this thing's going to turn around and say something. And then the creepy dolls were going to marry Kate and Ashley were going to talk to me when I came back. And it was like, nah, I wasn't afraid of you anymore, you know? And so isn't that funny? Like once you face a fear, it's like the bridges. Now, honestly, I saw a bridge coming up and I thought, all right. I can challenge myself to this and see, you know, how high it is or, and actually it wasn't much of a bridge. And so I, actually I was kind of disappointed, but last year I would have been getting out of the car, out of the van, talking to somebody, how's that bridge? Is it high? What's the deal? And so I think it's a lesson in knowing, and we've all heard this, once you face your fears, like the best part is on the other side, because then once you face them, they're not fears anymore. And fear is just another emotion, just like sadness is, just like happiness is, just like, you know, guilt, anything any emotion that you can think of that, you know, I told you guilt is a wasted emotion because there's nothing you can do about what you feel guilty for. And the only thing you can do is face that. So if you feel guilty about something like something you did to somebody, you know, there's maybe certain things you could do like apologize or you know or if it's too far beyond that then you have to forgive yourself and just know you're at a spot that you just didn't know any better and there's never an emotion that you can't come out of because there's always another emotion after that. I don't know. Just your whole day is filled with emotions. So, you know, started my day off like kind of sad. And then ended up, I mean, you saw in the video, I was with John and Keith and we were laughing. Oh my gosh, we have so much fun. And I tell you, I realize now that that's like... That's, that's what we all need. We all need people that around us. I wish, I wish more people could have community like that. Because when I'm home, I mean, I had Al and stuff like that. And he, Al got me through all that. Al and I would laugh, honestly, till we cried. And I told you before. We would say to each other, Al started it. And he said, Tracy, those that laugh the most win. And so after a night when, you know, both of us could be down or whatever, and we would get together and we would just be laughing. And at the end of the night, I go, Al, those that laugh the most. And he goes, wins. And I'm like, that's exactly right. And the whole point to my journey 
And I think in sharing it is that I don't even know if it's about the adventures anymore as it is about finding home. And home, you know, you think where you are is home because you're familiar with it. But home could be other places where you find other people. I mean, you would think that I travel cross country that I wouldn't feel at home ever, you know, because I'm traveling, I'm going to different places. But it's people who make it feel like home. It's not places that make things feel like home. And that's what I've realized. And John and Keith and I talk about this a lot, like how we met, how we've stayed friends, how, you know, and we've all, I, uh, you know, their, their stories aren't my story to tell. But, you know, they've been through their own hardships. And so when we come together, we know that, you know how when you say you love somebody unconditionally? Well, unconditionally means no conditions. And that's how much we love each other. And I can tell you honestly that my own family doesn't love me without conditions. Um, you know, I grew up the youngest out of six kids. And I want to tell you, it, it was pretty hard. Um, being the youngest, because everybody thinks you're babied, you know, you're, um, you get more, and you don't, and you, and you don't even know you're getting more, you're not in charge of that, your parents are, you know, so whatever you're given, it's usually because, like, in my family, there were six kids, so by the time I came along, my parents had more, and I didn't, I, I don't think I got anything more. But then I was always told, and I always felt like I was in the way, you know. Oh, you have to take Tracy here, or you have to, like, watch Tracy, or, you know. And so I always felt like I was a burden. And I think that's why my whole life... I always tried to please people because I felt like a burden. Like, no, I won't make much much fuss. Do you know what I mean? I'll just stay in the background here and I won't make a lot of fuss. I don't want to put you out and I don't want to, you know, do anything to draw attention to myself because I don't want you to feel like you have to take care of me. And, um, it's funny now at 58, I finally feel like I can, like, be myself and stand in that power. And part of it has been letting my family go. Not joy. Not joy. No, no, no. Joy's amazing. Um, but you know, half, I mean, my sister passed away, so there's six of us. Chris, so it's Sandy, Chris, Pam, Al, Kim, oh wait, <laughs> Sandy, Chris, Pam, Al, Kim, and me. Yeah, that's six. <laughs> and so, um, Chris passed away, Al passed away. Pam's in an assisted living home. Uh, Kim, we don't talk to. And, you know, this isn't something that I would share, but. And these are the reasons why I wake up the next morning and I'm afraid to see the comments because 
when I share so deeply, listen, I, like I said, on these, I'm sitting in the back of the van. I have no lights on and I'm just talking. But these seem to resonate with people the most. Um, so Kim, I love Kim and she's the closest one to me, like in age order. But she, um, she won't, she won't associate with anybody that doesn't think like she does. I'm just going to put it that way. And so I haven't talked to her in a long time. And then Sandy, the oldest, um, we were the two taking care of my mom. And I hope my mom doesn't, mom, I know you're listening, but, um, I'm going to tell you guys this because maybe you'll understand that my oldest sister, when my dad died, she told my mom, her and her husband said, um, you know, sell your house. You're going to stay with us. We have these plans. We're going to build this huge garage. Listen, they're very wealthy to begin with and you know you're going to build this mother-in-law house apartment and she even got an elevator and um so my mom took all of her money from that house and put it in their house and it was like $150,000 and she hired my sister's husband my sister Kim the one that I said that you know um and he screwed her over and charged her a lot more money than it should have cost, okay? And so now, Sandy and Dan bought that house. And they redid everything. I mean, it needed a lot. It was on a, it's on a lake and stuff. But they sold it for like a million dollars, okay? A million dollars. Close to, okay, close to. And um, my mom had already moved to the apartment. Um, Because, you know, when you live with family, sometimes things happen. Anyway, and she paid them. Not only did she pay for that, them building, you know, that mother-in-law apartment that people could make money off of. You know, whoever moved in there, they could rent that out um that she still paid them six hundred dollars a month and so I told you my mom doesn't have a lot she didn't think she'd live till she was 94 she had like sixty thousand dollars and um you know she thought once they sold their house they would give her the investment back because I think they paid like 400000 for that house. And they did a lot to it. Don't get me wrong. They did a lot to it. But my mom put $150,000 into it. And they... And Sandy used to be her power of attorney. I am now. And Sandy was on her, um, you know, checking account. She knows how much my mom has. And they won't give her any money back. Nothing. I mean, even 50,000, 40,000, you know, knowing she's at the end of her life and she just wants to be able to not have to worry about it. And they won't give her anything. And so it's made it difficult. And then Maddie passed away. And you think money would mean nothing. Money means nothing to me. I know I can take care of myself. And now I want to take care of my mom. Because my sister won't take care of my mom. And my sister doesn't... Nobody has anything to do anymore with Pam. Um, Before I left, I brought her lunch. 
I think my sister Kim sees her every once in a while. But Sandy doesn't have anything to do with her. And um, so, yeah. So they have a million dollars, plus they have a pension they get, plus they have Social Security, you know. So they get to leave that to their kids. But they won't give it to my mom, even though she's owed that, so she can live the rest of her life comfortably. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, I just want you to know that, um, you know, there's all these emotions that you go through. I've been through so many. And I think about, you know, when I leave Minnesota, there's so much trauma I've dealt with there. And it's even before all that, you know, I don't know if you know, I've, um, I was married, and uh, I went through infertility treatments for a year. We couldn't get pregnant, and I don't even think I was in love with him. And uh, he was not very nice. Like, I would have to have shots in my ass, shots in my stomach, and he would just laugh. And... um, You know, I had cystic acne when I was younger in my teens. I was on Accutane twice. And um, it's just been like one thing after another. And then when I was 28, my sister passed away when she was 42. And that was really hard because I didn't understand And then her husband passed away at 52. And then my dad had a massive stroke when we buried, the day we buried Frank, my dad has a massive stroke. And then it's just on and on and on. And so, um, and I want you to know, like, what you see, you know, you could think that I'm the most confident person. Like, if you would look at me, and now I am because I can stand in my truth, but before I was just trying to please people and I can identify with people who who have been through so much, you know, and that's why money means nothing to me because I don't understand how that could be more than how somebody feels, you know? And the only reason why I want to win the four, Fab Over 40 is so I can help my mom and help my daughter. And, and I just don't... Um, and when I think about myself, you know... And I can't believe that anybody even wants to listen to me, honestly. You know, that anybody, like, even cares what I have to say. But, you know, I've been given something that I feel has kind of been, you know, that I could share. So that, because other people can identify with that. And I want to use that to do good, you know, and so, um, yeah, all right, um, but I'm gonna let you guys go, I just wanted to share tonight, oh, and I'm going to the eyeball, and Dr. Galani called me tonight, and, um, he wants me to get up and speak, and, um, he said I inspired him for what he's doing and he started a nonprofit so that he could you know gift people um, what he's done and I can't believe that the conversations that we had led to this and 
Um, so just know that you can change. I mean, never. I mean, I, I still don't understand it, but um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, just know that you can, no matter what you think about yourself, and I'm finally finding the confidence in myself that you can change the world. And I know it doesn't seem like that to you. I never thought I could do van life. I never thought life would end up like this. I never thought that I would be where I am. And I am just so freaking grateful that I took that chance to do van life because none of this ever would have happened had I not, I never would have met Keith and John. I never would have met, you know, I just, I, I never would have met any of you. And I'm so grateful for all the support because it keeps giving me more confidence to keep doing what I'm doing. And I hope you know that you also have that in you. And you can be the good in the world. All right. Go out and make an adventure. No matter how big or how small. You don't have to sell everything and move into a van. I did that. You can. It's great. Go call someone you love. And as Joy says, tell them that you love them. And don't you dare forget your magic. And... Always, 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 always look for the good. Okay. Night.